Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah rabbil alamin wassalatu wassalamu ala asyrafil anbiya wal mursalin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajmain. Alhamdulillah. Uh, today we're going to discuss how our physical world, our physical realm is connected to our psycho spiritual realm and what are the organs that is uh, complementing in our understanding of the nature of human existence. So I have explained to you in, in the previous video psycho-spiritual basis for Islamic psychology and Pi CBT and how we use uh, this, this format or this uh, model by Al-Imam Ghazali Rahimahullah about the nature of the Kalb which is the master programmer then the nature of the Roh, the Akal and the Jasad and how the Nafs interface at the various level of existence. So Naturally, in, in modern psychology, we will have to use uh, many, many of the tools. And some of these tools are cognitive tools, some of these tools are, you know, are using uh, gadgets, electronic uh, sensing, MRI, functional MRI, PET scan, uh, heart rate variability machine, and so on. So, we as Muslims will have to develop a research based uh, protocols eh, in which we can then say, okay, this is how we operate in so far as the psychology of uh, of this modern world, how Islamic psychology can fit in into this whole realm of psychology, neurosciences, uh, quantum physics and whatever other sciences is moving on very very fast. So what are we going to say to them? Because then they will say, okay, what, are, what is the relationship between your heart, for example, and your cult? And how are you going to relate to this? So I'm just going to give you a discussion because as I say, this this knowledge is something that we all have to work on but uh, it is not something that uh, I can definitely define because I don't have a laboratory to do all that work but inshallah in the future when we have a number of Islamic universities uh, around the world they can do those kind of research uh, replicate what is being done at the uh, for example at the various universities uh, you know whether there's Oxford University whether it is uh, uh, MIT and all over the world they're doing all kind of research in which if you uh, study it will be very very deep in terms of the uh, empirical proof of what they are doing so we Muslims must have the same empirical proof but naturally when we talk about the psycho spiritual there is that proof cannot be measured in, in a way that we can measure for example neurological processes so I just want to give you some ideas so that we can start thinking about this so that inshallah as we develop our, our positive Islamic cognitive behavior therapy or the whole framework for Islamic psychology in which I'm trying to think about to the world, we can have some via media of how we can define ourselves even though some of these ideas may not be directly relevant but there are a lot of indicators. For example, if we talk about our psycho-spiritual physical connection in Islamic psychology, we know that our existence come from where? We came from where? We came from the command of Allah. When Allah command our existence, we became. So first Allah command the existence, I mean our existence in the spiritual realm and the realm of Azali before even the universe. That is the nature of the Islamic existence. We are a spiritual being before we are even a physical being. Then from the realm of the creative process of the what which Allah caused this manifestation of this universe to exist all right then Allah created us that means after the universe 13.7 billion years ago kun fayakun and then it became and then we are then fused with this jasad all right our nafs contain our spiritual self our emotional self our mental self and our physical self so this is our nafs as we exist on this earth all right so how then this nafs as we exist on this earth relate to our organs for example if we talk about the brain now there's a lot of brain sciences they are doing a lot of research they use PET scan functional MRI they're using heart rate variability they use all the various sensors uh, to do brain scan and so on so how this akal we are talking about relates to the brain because our akal is transcendental our akal is not just the brain so for example if uh, these so-called neurologists who are atheistic they say okay is everything in the brain there's no such thing as this entity called akal because this is a higher level this is the spiritual concept this is a realm of uh, which is beyond space beyond time yes we can explain it from, from perspective yes we this is not just the physical body but it is the 
uh, consciousness from the rim of consciousness and we can prove it from quantum physics for example quantum mechanics and the nature of consciousness from perspective of quantum sciences we can do that yes we can prove that and in fact there is many ways of proving it so then at least we can have some sort of dialogue okay because you say no everything the brain is be all and then all you say no there is a higher brain we call it uh, the supraconscious that comes from the rim of god all right or you can call it universal consciousness whatever field force that is there all right it is there and this can be scientifically proven all right and so then we will have to bring our our claim all right so i'm going to show you some of these videos later on of this relationship eh? because these are all research done by non-muslims remember in this 21st century we muslims are very backward but a lot of non-muslims scientists and uh, psychiatrists and neuroscientists as well as their physicists are combining they're pulling together to develop an idea of the nature of human consciousness which i have given you a taste just in in a, in a previous video so if we talk about our brain all right the neurological concept that is being developed is so fantastic so wonderful but then if we link to our akal the higher mind okay supraconscious mind all right in which it is endowed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then we can see how this is related the same thing if we talk about the cup the heart all right this is our physical heart how is it related to the cult our spiritual heart so the spiritual heart is linked to the physical heart because it creates in ourselves the intuitive self so the intuitive nature of our existence that affects the feelings in our physical heart the emotions are in the physical heart comes from a realm beyond space beyond time this again can be proven all right there are a lot of research in that area which are being done again by non-muslim scientists so we can then post post it our position all right in this in this area we can leapfrog that means we can use this and say okay uh, we can prove this we can prove this how are we going to prove this uh, this is the most difficult part because how you can say the row because within the physical realm our row is linked to our jasad but in the ancient texts yeah, Al Imam Ghazali and uh, Ibn Qayyim and all the rest they are talking about this nature of the row that is linked to the life force so the life force as we say today because the nature of life itself is, is a mystery how what is the difference between life and death all right that is the dialogue that is going on so from the perspective of life let the life force is also a form of row it's a form of something that is not physical because if i tell you we are living we are alive what do you mean by that oh we are alive because all our organs are functioning and we are conscious of our existence but what is we are alive post death what is the difference what is that nature of consciousness that that this nature of the roh the higher form beyond this jasad so how is it linked to the jasad of, of our physical body in this world so there's a lot of research here again so each and every one of this area has tremendous potential for us to bring across a wonderful framework of islamic psychology uh, I'm not equipped to, to do all that. I have s some amount of knowledge gen as a generalist. Uh, uh, my friend used to say, "You are, a, you know, you you know many things." But I say, "Yes, I know many things generally." All right, but I'm not a specialist. Okay, so we have to have specialists who who can then develop this idea, and this only can come about from research from the various universities, the various practitioners who can carry this uh, Islamic psychology at a higher level of. Uh, uh, the kind of it, a high level of acceptance especially within the ummah first within the ummah always we talk about within the ummah and then at a higher level we can then uh, sell this idea to the world because whatever they are trying to prove is already proven in islam which is the irony whatever scientific discovery they are discovering is consonant with the world view of islam that was formulated a thousand years ago imam ghazali 550 uh, after hijriah it's about a thousand years you know so this is where we we can see how we can help to develop a wonderful ummah and i'm not going to dwell into very deep into this because as i said these are areas of sciences that need a lot of specialists it's not something uh, generalists like myself can say okay this is the nature of this nature of this nature of this i can only refer back to the works of our great scholars and then I can tell you, okay, this is this is what 
we know as so far and how are we going to prove it uh, that is something that is beyond uh, our capacity as an Ummah now but we can do inshallah over the next many many years when, as we develop the protocol the format and the idea of positive, positive uh, Islamic psychology as well as the framework for Islamic psychology and we develop this positive is Islamic cognitive behavior therapy then we can help the Ummah because we have the Ummah the 1.7 billion Muslims are facing a lot of problems we have a lot of psychological problems among the 1.7 billion people so how are we going to help out first ourselves within the Ummah and develop a framework that is acceptable to all Muslims and then develop a framework that can be accepted to all humanity and inshallah if we do that we will achieve great success in this world and the hereafter and we bring about and, and Islam based on ilm and knowledge because it, Allah has told us many many times of being ulil albab, being people who think, people who reflect over the creation of the heavens and the earth, people who reflect over uh, the existence of the water cycle of the of the clouds bringing rain, people who reflect about the sailing of the ships on the ocean, people who reflect on the nature of the cosmos, people who reflect on the nature of our inner self, people who reflect on this all over the Quran hundreds of times why because islam is a deen based on knowledge it is knowledge centric the truth will always prevail because allah tells us wa kul jal haqqu wa zahqal batil innal batil kana zahuqa said that when, when truth come the batil will disappear for surely the batil is just uh, it's a very minor thing so we 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 know this truth that Allah has given us but we have not exercised the deep understanding of this truth and by exercising the this deep understanding of this truth inshallah we will develop a very f strong framework for Islamic psychology and this will give us will help us to solve a lot of problems within the ummah and inshallah my humble work that I'm trying to do just little just little videos that I'm putting out uh, almost uh, which time I'm free to just give the motivation for those who have this better knowledge if you are a psychologist or you are a psychiatrist or you are a physicist or you are inclined to certain area of sciences Islam brings about a very integrative science of the nature of man the nature of existence the nature of God which is beyond us but at least from the attributive aspect we can understand this beautiful deen that Allah has presented to the world through our beloved and his beloved Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, his kinfolk, his sahabas, the tabi'in, the tabi tabi'in, the great scholars that we all appreciate and love and from them to us this baton will pass on until Yamul Akhir inshallah